You were really looking at a variety of things. You were looking at the height of this rock, which will end up being a retaining wall stone for the berm. So this will be different than what our viewers have seen in the rest of our videos, where this is all gonna be bermed up in through here. And there will be landscape plants because the waterfalls is basically starting where you're at and yep. dumping into the right. eco stream here. Yep. So we need all of that real estate back behind us. So this is actually really, really cool how different and unique it is when we're using the exact same space and the same structures haven't changed. Yeah. I see Micho and Taylor kind of working on grading that out. We talked about maybe switching it up and doing a much different edge treatment than we've right. seen in really of the any other of the AOTY videos, but also kind of uncommon in our line of work. So explain right. to me what, what you're thinking over here is. So something you see a lot in nature is just sort of a grassy, buffery edge that kind of just rolls down into the water, whether it's a, a stream bed or a, or a natural lake or what have you. So we're going to try and see if we can replicate that. So oh. open in, not so much a hard edge, more of a soft greenery edge, and we'll just we'll see how it goes. That'll be awesome. walk through the design now I think the first step is going to be share the vision with the rest of the team and then we'll start getting shovels in the ground right Sounds good. Let's get moving. all right let's go One of the things that I think is really special about Tim's design, you guys have seen on some of the other artists in the year, is those elevation changes that um, are so crucial in a flat backyard to give it just so much more interest. So what we're doing right now is we are setting steps going to an upper patio, which is going to be more of a formal seating area. We're going to do some really cool stuff with one of our fire spillway bowls, as well as a patio pond setup that's going to be unique to Tim's. But it's super important that we understand what elevations, where we're going from, and then where we're going to, whether it's up or down so that when we're setting these stepping stones and staircase pieces that we're making sure that all of our elevations are lining up so it's really important to understand the thickness of the stones also ultimately what the goal is or the end or final result needs to be so it takes some time but it's definitely worth putting in that extra effort but this is just going to be awesome how you just kind of careen back through this big bouldery staircase up to an upper patio that is otherwise going to be screened by strategic planting and that kind of stuff so really excited with the progress that we're making it's still very early in the day. Once we get this done, then we can really start digging into the pond, getting that dug out, all that dirt will come back, fill up our berm, and then we can start rocking in the pond as well, and we're not cutting off access. I think we're doing things the right way. Hmm? Yo. How do you feel after day one? I feel really good. Do you? Yeah. You I look do. really good. Oh, you, you look you look amazing. Thank you. You do as well. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> lying but Tim I, I feel like we made pretty good progress today we hit one of our benchmarks which was to kind of get this area the elevations all set right. get the steps in exactly yeah so this is our semi-formal kind of secret garden area here so this really serves up like you said as the benchmark for the elevation of everything else off of it so not only did we have that to deal with we also had to watch our machine logistics because once we start digging here we're gonna be kind of locked in with machines yep we did a little bit of digging focused over here so that way tomorrow we can come in and kind of go from there and, and go off the directions that we need to. Good, so I see behind you, we have the EcoStream basically dug out for the section that's gonna be going up underneath the patio. I'm really excited to see that cross bedding technique using the slate that we were talking yep. about earlier that they will see later on in the video, which will be really, really cool. We've got this portion of the EcoStream dug out. However, you were saying logistically, we were gonna run into an issue had we kept digging in through here because of the size of some of the rocks that I know you wanna see incorporated onto this side of the pond and we wouldn't be able to set from all
all the way over there because of the reach of the machine, the power of the machine, that kind of stuff. So I think what we had talked about was we'll get the liner in and we'll have enough liner for the entire stream waterfalls area, but we're gonna fold that stuff back, roll it up, and we'll just work in this area, get this area done, correct? Yes, exactly. Right, and then roll I'll, it back. Roll it and work backwards this way. Right, and then work back into the waterfalls. Exactly. Tim, real quick, explain to me why this elevation was so important for the rest of the design. Well, one thing when, when it comes to designing waterfalls, everybody talks about you don't want to have that volcano look, right? We want it to look more natural in scale with the slope of the land. What we want to do over here is right about here is where our eco stream is going to start. It's going to well up out here and come out over some large rocks. That waterfall is going to be about this high. It's about the same height as where that patio is going to be. Yep. So this wall of, of rock here is going to tie in perfectly with our waterfall and we're going to have continuous elevation back behind us as well. So that way we have everything looks really nice and to scale with the property. So when you were establishing the height for this upper patio, this kind of semi-formal area, you were really looking at a variety of things. You were looking at the height of this rock, which will end up being a retaining wall stone for the berm. So this will be different than what our viewers have seen in the rest of our videos, where this is all going to be bermed up in through here. And there will be landscape plants because the waterfalls is basically starting where you're at and yep. dumping into the right. eco stream here. Yep. So we need all of that real estate back behind us. So this is actually really, really cool how different and unique it is when we're using the exact same space and the same structures haven't changed. We still have the column yep. that's always been there. We've got the post that's cut into the top of the rock, but we're going to repurpose those elements in a much, much different way, which I think is awesome. And that's all part of the design process and understanding elevations, right? right? Exactly. So, so at the end of day one, yeah, we didn't get liner in. We didn't really get too much done from the water feature side of things, but we got the important logistical part of it done, which sometimes that takes the longest. Yeah. And now that gives a good base for crews at Crux Lawn to do that patio. Yep. Right? Yep. We're going to have a lot of stuff back in here too. So another reason we needed this elevation to be able to work backwards with yep. the other vignette that's going to be back in this corner is going to be kind of another secret area. That's awesome. Awesome. So you ready to eat some dinner at the end of day one? I don't think I need it, but I'm ready for it. All right. Cool. Thanks, bud. I love how the design is coming together. Yes, we have liner coming in. Are you guys ready? Yep. So we've got liner coming in. We've got the rest of the gang over here. Where Tim is at is going to be where, roughly where the intake bay is going to sit. We have a 30 by 40 foot liner. And the reason we have that is we want all one solid piece because it's gonna be a lot of open water over here, but different depths. There's going to be a simulated wetland filter back over there where the bridge element is gonna creep over the eco stream. We didn't wanna take a chance and do a seam. So rather than doing that and being that we have to work our way out, we need to bring in this big 30 by 40 foot piece of liner to go all the way back to where our waterfalls will sit which is about 30 feet away from the deck right here so we have to compensate for the elevation changes you need to go that way that's our 40 all right we've got the liner going in what we'll do now is we're going to unfold it kind of get it twisted to get all the right angles of it i think you're good so you can see that liner goes all the way back over to where that waterfalls is going to sit. We probably have a couple extra feet left over, but we needed to compensate for the elevation changes or the shelves that are happening in here. So we we're going down two feet here, then going across and two feet up. And I'll show you when the lighter's unfolded, how much it's going to eat up of the real estate of the pond. Okay, so this is our large piece of liner based off of Tim's design for the EcoStream. The reason that we wanted to go with one solid piece was because of the simulated wetland that we're going to achieve. So it'll all look like open water in through here. So yep. we really didn't want to mess around with doing any kind of seam work or anything like that. One of the nice things about having one solid piece, but it's going to make a little bit extra work because of access and that kind of stuff. So right. we'll have to roll it in, roll it out, roll it in, roll it out as we're working. But uh, like Chris said, it's, it would be, it'd be silly to risk seaming all this because it's all going to be same surface elevation from here all the way up to that first waterfall. Yep. So, and it looks like we might be close at that waterfalls, which is okay, but I think we can get an overlap coming yeah. in because we will have a good 16 to 20 something inches of waterfall height over there. So we'll be able to yes. pull that off. Yep. So I'd rather seam all the way back over there than anywhere down through here where it would be a large like 20, 25 right. foot long seam. Yep. So, all right, so we're gonna get ready to rock and roll, Tim. Game plan is probably get some of these big boulders set down and through here, get that intake place so that we can continue to keep moving back.
real quick, what I want you to show is we've got Joe from Nature's Waterscapes uh, out of California, which is the guy you brought in from the Rancho Cucamonga area, Cucamonga. right? So Joe's down here working on your, what did we call it yesterday? So what we're doing here is some slate work, but it's not just your regular slate work. We're gonna mimic what you see in nature is, is a phenomenon called cross bedding. Mm -hmm. Geological formation that a lot of times if you're, let's say you're in a, a river with a high cliff face, you're gonna see a lot of that layering of the different layers. Of sure. Um, and it's not always straight, you know, with the horizon. Yeah. A lot of times it has some, some waves and undulations to it. So instead of just going in with the straight horizontal slate work, yep. we're gonna do some cross bedding and put it on that angle. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. It does, it looks very, very natural. The combination of the different size pieces, the thicknesses of them, the lengths of them, is really gonna help bring that biomimicry to life, right? So awesome. Well, we are in great shape. Daniel's gonna keep digging, and I guess we'll just keep rocking and rolling on this eco pond. Eco stream. Eco stream. Eco stream. All right, good, Joe. Get back to work. Yes, sir.